Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made, and today we're going to tackle the project that is sharpening scissors. If you're like me, you probably have a drawer full of scissors that are dull or you just toss them when they get dull and go out and buy a new set. And I've got this pair of old scissors. These were my father's scissors. I remember running around with these when I was a child. Now they're in my possession and I want them to be sharp again so we can put them back in service. Big shout out to Jason Newville for posting on Facebook about his journey using our gear and sharpening his pair of scissors. He is the inspiration for this video. Jason, you're the best. Appreciate you. We're going to be using a 2x72 belt grinder to do this and the perfect blade sharpening system that we make right here at Housemade. That is a collaboration between myself and Dennis Terrell. Now, if you're not familiar with the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project, it is a big, heavy duty industrial machine that you build yourself from our pieces, parts, or plans. You can go to my website, housemade.us, to check that project out. What I love about the Revolution project is that at the end of it, you feel empowered because you've learned a little bit about fabrication, a little bit about welding, and at the end, you have an awesome, versatile machine that should be in every workshop. The reason I love this system is because it does not discriminate. You can literally sharpen anything with this. And uh, today, we're gonna tackle the hardest thing to sharpen, in my opinion, and that is a pair of scissors. So let's get started. There's a few things you're gonna wanna have at the ready to make this process efficient one of which is an angle finder. This is kind of a standard carpenter's angle finder. This is my father's as well, although I've never seen him use it, but uh, it's definitely something that came out of his toolbox. I don't remember buying it. Another version of an angle finder, which is a digital angle finder, and this one has a magnet on it, which makes it super easy to use. These are inexpensive, and I have links down in the description to help you find this. And most likely you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver to take the scissors apart. This one was made for me by my buddy Darren over at Stormlight Forge. Beautiful piece. All right, so let's get set up for this. You can use your flat platen on the Revolution. Um, I like to roll this thing forward a little bit and set it in place. That way it gives me a clear view of the belt that's coming across. We'll loosen this up and we're going to put in our VSM 600 grit compact grain belt. Okay, so these are fantastic for, new, for numerous reasons and uh, one of which is uh, I love the way that these break down over time. They just seem to stay sharp as you use them. We sell these at Housemade with our sharpening system so you can add this to your order. 100% um, worth getting and they last a long time. And in fact, VSM created these uh, so that they should be used in a wet environment. Um, and we use misting systems a lot when we sharpen stuff. So it, that works out great for these. So let's go ahead and mount our belt on the Revolution. I like to have it a little bit tight because we want that top. This is the portion of the belt that we're gonna use. And I like it to be nice and tight. It's not super important, but it should be fairly tight. I get that question a lot, like how, how much tension should I have on this belt? Well, when I rest my arm on there, my hand on there, I should see about one inch of bounce or less. So that's how I measure it. It's not scientific, it just seems to work. Now we're gonna add the sharpening system. This is the perfect blade sharpening system. It goes into the bottom receiver of the Revolution and slides right into place. Uh, what I like about this system is how versatile it, versatile it is and how easy it is to set up. It's not a lot of fancy angles and things that you need to know. It's just a couple of knobs and it gets you where you need to go. So if your scissors come apart, that's ideal. These haven't been apart probably ever, so we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the screw and the two pieces come apart like that. Um, one of the things about scissors and why they're kind of intimidating is you can kind of see there's a radius there. They're not, they're not actually flat. So that's what makes this process just a wee bit tougher. However, I will say on a 2x72 belt grinder, uh, it doesn't really make a difference. So now we're going to take our angle finder, this guy, we're going to loosen it up and we're going to set it up against the uh, flat part of the scissors here. So this is like the inside of the scissors. And we're going to take this and we're going to line it up with the actual 
bevel angle. You're going to need you get your get your eyes out for this one. My old eyes can barely see it, but it's there. And I'm going to just line this up like so and lock this into place. Okay. So the plastic part or wooden part of your angle finder goes up against the flat inside portion of the scissor and then it lines up. You can see how it's measuring that angle right there and I'll show you in a second how we can figure out what angle that is. So now we're going to take our our angle finder here and set it on something flat, grab our digital angle finder, turn it on and then zero it out on this base here. So now we have our index, which is that base. And then we're just going to simply put it right here and it's going to tell us what our angle is. And that's 64.4, probably closer to 65. And that's the angle we're going to shoot for when we go to set up the perfect blade sharpening system. Now we're going to lock the scissor, one half of the scissors, into our jig. Just being mindful that the edge of the scissors is aligned with the edge of our jig. The other thing I like to do is take a marker. You can see this is where our sharpening needs to end. And I'm going to mark that on the top side so I can see it when I'm, when I'm actually doing the sharpening work. So I'll have a stop right there. And that's, that'll be easy enough to see because this side will be facing up when we do the sharpening. Okay, so now this is the fun part. We need to set the angle of this rail and we want to be able to work on the portion of the belt that's right behind the platen wheel. We have a couple of things to contend with. It's just this little piece on the D plate. So we're going to go just behind that right about here. And if you take this uh, pair of scissors and you set it on here at, at about that angle, which we can kind of play with that here. We can kind of get a, a sense of where we need to be, just an average sense. We know that the rail needs to sit right where my, my finger is up here at the bottom of this jig. So I just kind of do this by eye until I get it. And the more you do this, the faster it will go. And then when you think you got it close, grab your digital angle finder again and zero it out on the top of your belt and then see where you sit. Oh man, we're close. We're five degrees off. So we need to tilt up a little bit. Now we're right at 60, about 66 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be close. Now I'm gonna lock everything down and before I start sharpening, I'm going to take my digital angle finder and I'm going to zero it out on this arm right here. And then I'm going to set it on my D plate and take a picture of that degree. I'm going to take a picture of it at this degree right here and at this degree right here. What that's going to do is it's going to give me a baseline for the next time I decide I want to sharpen this same pair of scissors so I don't have to rework the machine. I can just set these angles to the way they are now and I should get the exact same angle moving forward whenever I sharpen these scissors. Now these compact grain belts like to be wet while they're being used. So we're going to put on our misting system here so we can keep our work cold and the belt can do its best job. Now I'm going to run the belt in reverse and uh, the Revolution Gen 5, the tracking system, which is called our fast track system, allows for any belt to be run forward and reverse on this machine. And I think that's pretty important. However, if your machine doesn't run in reverse, that's okay too. You can just do the opposite of this and run your, run your sharpening system towards you, you know, run the blade and the belt towards you. But we're going to run it in reverse. We're going to run it at about, to start about 10%. We'll go ahead and click reverse, click start. And dial this thing in, pretty easy. And 
we're going to add just a little bit of water to the system here. We're going to take our scissors, set the jig on the rail. Run it all the way across. I'm just checking the angle here. Make sure it looks like it's in line, and it does. What I think I love about this process is that it's very easy. You don't have to do much thought once you've set up the angle. And I'm able to actually work out some of the little nicks and dings and things that are in the edge of these scissors. And also, scissors are only one bevel, right? So you're only going to have to do this twice, once on each side. But uh, this is coming out pretty great. I'm going to do a few more swipes and then switch over to the other side. Also, one thing to remember when you're doing this, just like a knife, you kind of want to feel a little burr all the way across. So I'm just rubbing my thumb across this to feel the burr. I've got a burr up in the front half of this, but not in the back half. So I'm going to keep working this out. And that makes sense because usually it's this area of scissors that get worked the most. Uh, the, the tip is usually just, uh, you know, kind of a, the secondary cut. So uh, let's go ahead and keep working on this side until we get a burr all the way across. Okay, I've got a burr all the way across now. feel pretty great about that. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of this jig, this side of the scissors out of this jig, and put in the other side and do the exact same operation. Now, just so you're aware, not all scissors are created equal. You want to check the bevel edge angle on both pieces of your scissors. Sometimes scissors are designed to have different angles on each side. In my case, though, these are both the same. Okay, for some reason, side two went way faster. Not really sure why, but did not take very long to build up a burr on this side. I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the jig and I don't really strop that often, but if I do, I just use the edge of my workbench or piece of wood, run the edge over it to break the burr, and then I will reassemble and we will give these a try. See if I did it right. Moment of truth. I'm doing this live on camera, by the way. <laughs> so I don't really know, this could get screwed up. Oh, oh yeah. I'd say the sharp. All right. Success. So there you have it. Super sharp scissors in about 10 minutes. Uh, I think if I wasn't filming, it would have taken a lot less time. So just remember the perfect blade sharpening system you can get on our website, the misting system, the belts, all of that you can get on our website. And you too can have super sharp scissors in your drawer. So I appreciate you guys for watching. Thank you so much for all the support throughout the years. And remember the best way to support my channel is to go to housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans for all of the projects we have over there. And I hope to see you guys on the next video. My name is Brian House and this has been Housemade.